It's an all gamer podcast today. We're talking about retro bits, officially licensed Sega controllers, high Guardian Spice announcement slash trailer. Okay, technically, I guess it's not gaming. My thoughts on how to stop reboots, especially concerning Streets of Rage 4, and as a Patreon exclusive, let's call this the Madden Incident. Hey, I have a lot to complain about, so let's do this. The recently canceled podcast with Von Hey, how goes it? So lately, I've just been uh, doing a little bit of gaming, you know, watching a few things here and there also, as far as movies are concerned. Might have uh, some black screen reviews for you of that. I've been playing some Overwatch, because I feel like with Decay in this game, now you need to play at the end of the season. You don't want Decay to be a factor, so just do your placements that way. You don't have, oh, you didn't log in for six days, now you got this Decay stuff. You don't have to deal with that. And I just solo queued as Wrecking Ball and got Masters. Fairly happy with that. Earned myself another gold gun for whoever the new character may be on the horizon. Crossing fingers, Junkertown Queen. Though her weapon looks like something that Brigida has. I guess she's got the mace of the face also, right? A big club. I see this news, and this is uh, long brewing here. Retrobit, who makes some kind of clone consoles. You know, a little promise of, hey, you want to be able to play your old NES on a TV that's modern? Okay, well, we've got a solution for you. You know, put in a bunch of different carts here and there, and, oh, look, our console can play this many different things, and... You know, it's not a terrible business model, but especially with nostalgia right now. But they have a deal with Sega. They're making officially licensed Sega controllers. This would be like Genesis 6 button or the Saturn Model 2. You know, the Japanese version of the Saturn or as America's Model 2 controller looked. Which people swear by that D-pad to this day. Also, with the six front-facing buttons, yeah, I think you have two shoulder buttons, too. This could be a great controller for those of you looking to play certain platformers, and especially if you're akin to fighting with with an actual D-pad. This is your fighting controller right here. They also have some different versions where they have analog sticks. I can't trust anybody's analog sticks anymore. Because the grippage, as Carl Pilkington would say, on the the rubberized end just varies so much. So many of them just break or wear down. I like the PlayStation 2's pattern, though it's a dome and with the placement it's not ideal for FPS games. But if you're playing with one of these controllers to begin with, you're playing old throwback titles, not particularly FPS titles. So, do you need the analog stick? Not particularly. You know, I I could see myself picking up a wired or wireless Saturn Model 2 style controller. Though, I mean, I, I could see some point to having the sticks, but if I'm playing with anything that needs sticks, it's on Xbox One. I've got Xbox One controllers. One that actually works. I've been through four controllers. Xbox support owes me an elite controller with Bluetooth when they get available. Because you should not go through a controller a year on a console. This is absurd. So overall, I would weigh judgment on Retrobit after I see how this product handles. Uh, If it has a good latency, low uh, feel, build quality, you know, these are things that need to be seen in person. Also, and didn't mention this earlier, what is it, Arcade 1-Up? They look to be dropping the ball. This looks like a dumpster fire. Have you seen their arcades? All the talk in retro gaming for weeks. Well, 1-Up Arcade, you pre-order here, $300. You can get like a Street Fighter cab. It's got Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And I think it had a Hyper Fighting, was it? Uh, it was like three Street Fighter 2, maybe it's two Championship Editions and Super Turbo. And then they have another version, they might have a, a three-player version, or maybe they'll have one come out that with like four slots, and then you could play like Turtles in Time and shit. 
they've got it's an it's a box on a chip. It's it's no better than a RetroPie with more limitations as far as the components go. You're looking at a 17-inch screen, guys. This is below arcade cabinet standard screen. And people, I there's some channel on YouTube, less than a thousand subscribers, got a review copy allegedly. This thing broke in shipping because he thinks somebody put it down on the ground too hard. Totally shattered the base. It's obvious from where this guy's seated, this thing is not big enough. And yeah, it's like the arcade experience, but it, you know, a tenth of the cost. It's not quite full scale. You think that the scaling is an issue of CRT monitor not being needed, so now you have a flat panel, and now you can put these anywhere, right? Well, you're running into a very narrow, shoddy-built cabinet. But to be honest with you, for the $300, it's not far from what I would expect. You're looking at, like, a particle board, balsa wood look cab. Yeah, it's got the, the stickers on it. Capcom's probably thinking, hey, we're not building these cabinets, so yeah, sure, I guess we can get a license deal. Go struck that up, you know. People are buying this stuff. They were pre-ordering up to $400. You get a riser that for like 50 bucks, so you can make it like a standing cab instead of a sit-down. And these are not going to work out for you guys. I hope you, uh, you know, may put the link up on the YouTube somewhere, but... Check out this guy's video on it, and you're going to want to cancel that pre-order. Because come January, these are going to be Craigslist specials. I swear. In other news, I caught this High Guardian Spice, let's call it announcement, okay? Because this is no trailer. Their Crunchyroll, who I applied for a job with and haven't heard back from, they are putting out original content, and it's to the anime community, but from America. So, is it really anime? Well, they have an upcoming series called High Guardian Spice, with a bunch of girls, uh, let's call it uh, rainbow-haired colored girls, Harry Potter, anime. In their announcement trailer, they're not talking about the series. They're not talking about the story, the narrative. They're not talking about the characters. They're talking about the development. And the development is, oh, look how diverse we are. Their idea of diversity is all women writing staff and having like half of the team is made of women. And you see that you see them sitting down and they're they're having like a little conference and you got all of these uh, you know SJWs the the uh, plus size purple hair pink hair blue hair black framed glasses all of that and they're talking about diversity. I don't see a lot of Asians. Don't see a lot of Indians. Don't see a lot of Native Americans. Don't see a lot of black people. But let's talk about our diversity. Overcompensating is not diversity, guys. And the quickest way to get me to not like your property is to not tell me about it. You're saying that your diversity is going to allow you to tell stories no one else can tell? Prove it. Don't just talk it up based on some identity bullshit. Oh, because I'm a white guy, now I guess I can't do anything good? Is that it? Is that why I can't get any viewers? Because I'm not some purple-haired trans chick? Is that what this is about? Because when you pander to a group, and that group only responds because they identify, it's because the product's no good. So, I wouldn't... I, I mean, if I had any interest in this, it would be killed off by now. It would have been killed off. It would have been Judy Winslow sent to her room and never coming back down. That's what this is. Then, of course, we have this little trailer bit showing off Streets of Rage 4. So where Sega looks like they're doing one thing kind of okay, hey, we can't be bothered to build our own controllers, but we'll let RetroBit do it. And if they do just as good of a job, fine, because right now, looking at other licensed USB Sega Model 2 Saturn controllers, they're going for like 100 bucks on eBay. So, anyways, 
let's just go ahead and farm out Streets of Rage 4. Yeah, we have this property, a now beloved property that hasn't had a game since 94, I believe, with Streets of Rage 3, which, by the way, maybe a little bit underrated as far as the Streets of Rage titles go. 3 doesn't get love, but it's it's uh, actually an improvement on 2. You've heard it here first. And Streets of Rage, to begin with, is a ripoff of Final Fight. They just straight up stole sprites and put them in. Yeah, you have a little bit of difference in music. You have a more of a sci-fi thing going on, especially with the Streets of Rage 2. There's a, a, a little bit of a change up at the ending, but overall you're looking at a very similar story and style, and it's all going back to Final Fight. Now we have a Streets of Rage 4, Made by some guy who ROM hacked Streets of Rage before. I mean, it's it's like Sega's going, hey, look, do we have fans making stuff for us? We have some fan that made a Sega game or a Sonic game. Let's give him the keys to Sonic. Let's have him make that that Sonic that blew up last year. Now it sets this weird precedent where everybody's going to run around ripping off games so that they can get a deal to rip off the game further. Now we've, we've got a guy who made like some kind of Streets of Rage fanfic type game. Now he gets a chance to officially license one. Using this art style that he pioneered, uh, air quotes, in that, that little ripoff title, now gets put into Streets of Rage. They're calling it Streets of Rage 4, but it may as well be a reboot. Because what separates this? What real passage of time? We see Axel and Blaze... And now Axel has a beard, but Blaze is still skinny and hot. It's been about 25 years. So what's the deal here? Uh, how come Sega couldn't have the foresight to say, look, we have properties people like, we can keep making some games, we can, we can evolve them, we can bring Streets of Rage to a 3D world, we can make it open world. They could have been on top of this. They, Streets of Rage could have been Grand Theft Auto if they had really evolved it and kept with it. But they screwed up, and they let it die. And now, because of nostalgia, here we are again. We got our new Streets of Rage 4. Let's add the 4 on there because right now a lot of people don't like reboots. So let's add that 4 on, even though it's a reboot. And, uh, you know, I get in an argument with people on Twitter... Some some guy, uh, I, don't, I don't know who the hell he is, some gaming journalist, I, I suppose. He, he gives the shut up and take my money, and I'm like, it's this attitude is why we live in a reboot, reboot culture, where nostalgia is everything, and oh hey, I remembered this, so here's my money, thanks for responding. And then he gives the, well I wouldn't 100% give him my money, you know. And then all of his little fanboys come at me because I'm the negative one. You haven't even played it yet. And I'm over here explaining how hyping up reboots damages any potential that original properties have. I would go as far as to say that if you are a media outlet and you so much as talk about these reboots like this, you get this stuff going on Twitter... And, oh, you see it's trending, so now you have to weigh in, and it just gets worse. It makes it that much harder for anybody with any original idea to get anything done. Because if all we're going to do is just talk up the stuff that's rebooted, that gives us nostalgia, that's familiar properties, we're taking away from the conversation that could be of something original. And that's why we don't have original stuff. Because if this was an original game, no one would be talking about it. Yours truly included. But I'm warning you guys. I'm warning you, don't go around talking about this stuff. Don't trust anybody who has a big media following. If if you see Forbes ma Magazine's gaming section talking up only reboots, what kind of games do you think we're going to get in the future? The ones that can get publicity, the reboots. Don't trust them. So that does it for this, uh, sorry, rather short episode 26 of the Recently Canceled Podcast, the free version. Gonna really get into it here in a minute on the Madden 
incident. So if you want to hear about that and you know damn sure YouTube will straight monetize, cancel this video, if I so much mention what happened there, you know, hit up my Patreon. It's $1 a month. Gets you full access to the recently canceled podcast. All the spicy content gets unlocked. 